this morning hallelujah well let's lift our voices let's give him worship because of that glorious day hallelujah we praise you jesus thank you father great is your name praise your goodness we thank you jesus we thank you lord for what you've done tonight. we praise you and worship you and we honor you and give you glory Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Great is your name. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus.
touching my heart with this love Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you You open my eyes, see your wonders in you You captured my heart with this love wonder if one or two will just lead us this morning and saying how beautiful our God is, how wonderful he is, how much we love him this morning.
run to you again, Lord Jesus, this morning. As I sung just, as we've just sung, we come as we are. It's acceptable to you. We run into your arms again this morning, Lord Jesus. We take that embrace from you. Like a father to a son, a father to a daughter, who embraces their child. We thank you we can run into those arms of yours and embrace us this morning, Lord Jesus. Whatever we're facing, whatever we're going through, you are with us. Thank you, Jesus. Vicky, could you put up those words? My heart needs a surgeon. Um, could um, sorry, I need to say, to say this because I'm bursting really. Um, this is part of my personal testimony. Uh, you might need to take your seats just for a second. Um, just before we moved here to area. I was going through a personal health tragedy. I was collapsing without warning. Now, I was collapsing in church, even collapsed in front of my granddaughter when she was only about six years old, and that really scared her in church. The pastor came over and prayed, prayed for me. Nothing happened. I had to go from the church in an ambulance to the hospital, and they couldn't do anything for me either. I got home eventually. Kathleen had to drive, me, drive us home from York, right up to Scotland. I was collapsing at bus stops without warning. Could have fallen in front of a bus without warning. Could have fallen in front of a train without warning. I didn't know what was happening. I was collapsing in ch and I collapsed in church again. I went to the Royal Infirmary in Edinburgh they even put monitors on me, and they couldn't find out what was wrong. And then the pastor, there was a Christian nurse tending to me, and they put mon my wife was going through hell and back, actually. And then the Christian, the pastor came and prayed for me, and all the monitors you could imagine went haywire, and they rushed me from the hospital to the best hospital in Edinburgh and the top surgeon, and all I needed was a pacemaker. God was on my side. My heart needed a surgeon. My heart needed a surgeon. And you know, when he was fitting the pacemaker, he said to me, what do you do? And as he did my, insurg my little incision, put this pacemaker in my I mean, I'd already had a quadruple bypass 16 years earlier. That's another story. That's for another time. But um, he said to me, what do you do? I says, oh, I'm a tree expert, and I work for the Forestry Commission. Well, he said, that's just across the road, isn't it? I said, yes. He says, oh, I've got trees in my garden. Would you give me some advice? I said, we did the incision and did things. Right. <laughs> Right, I said, okay. And I, we chatted away as he did the incisions and all that sort of stuff. And then he started, he said, oh, quiet. And he started counting. He says, eight, nine, 10, 11. And then he carried on counting. I says, what are you doing? He says, oh, I'm wrapping the wires around the, the anodes on the maker. Do you know, my heart needed a surgeon. I was in safe hands because God was looking after me. I really do believe that. That's why I prayed the way I prayed. I'm a living, talking, breathing miracle. Thank you. Thank you, Carly. Hallelujah. 
We worship you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for that testimony. And Lord, as we hear those words, we come before you now. And then things that we are going through, where we need that miracle in our lives, Lord. Maybe it's health issues, financial issues, concerns, worries, loved ones. And we run to the Father this morning. Our heart needs a surgeon. Our soul needs a friend. So we run to our Father again and again. And we do that this morning, Lord. We thank you for this week for answered prayers we've seen on a church WhatsApp, Lord. For Sandra and the operation. We thank you, Lord. But we pray complete healing upon now in the name of Jesus. We lift up Kyla to you this morning, Lord. Lord, would you give those surgeons and those uh, doctors wisdom this morning, Lord, to know what is happening there? Would you give joy, peace, Lord Father God, and the rest of the family in this, Jesus? Oh, Lord, we need you, Jesus. Worship you, Lord. We're going to prepare our hearts for communion and we're going to stand and we're going to worship him with I stand amazed. So let's stand. a uh, few technical issues so lord we we continue to praise you lord as we prepare our hearts for communion now lord jesus as we prepare our hearts to into that moment of remembering you and remembering all that you've done for us we come lord jesus with grateful hearts this morning in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned unclean how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall end
Please take your seats. I just want us to continue in this mode of worship, in this mode of focusing our eyes upon him this morning. How marvellous, how wonderful our song shall ever be. We all have a story to tell. And they're all different. But the one consistent is that God loves us. It tells us in the Bible in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. It also tells us that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all messed up. We've all got things wrong. But it tells us in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, hallelujah. So the night before Jesus was betrayed, the night before Jesus got arrested, ended up dying on that cross for me and for you, he took bread, he took wine, and he said, do this in remembrance of me. Do this to remember what I've done for you. I'm going to take all those wrongdoings. I'm going to take all of those things that we get wrong and I'm going to take them on my shoulders. And I'm going to take them onto that cross so we bear them no more in his love and grace. 1 Corinthians continues to tell us that we should examine ourselves. Not in guilt, not in shame. But to examine our hearts and our minds and to lay them before him this morning. So let's just spend a moment doing that. As we do it now, I'm going to ask Peace and Titus to come and help me serve this morning, please. Worship you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Lord, I thank you that we can turn to you. We can run to the Father. I thank you, Lord, you are able. We thank you, Lord, for that glorious day that when we met you, and we do this in remembrance of you. We do this in remembrance of who you are and for what you have done for us. And all we can do is to cry out, thank you. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Hello, good morning and welcome to Mosborough Elim Church. This is Video News. So coming up this week, as always, we have our prayer meeting on Tuesday at 6.30. Really want to encourage you to join us as we just gather together via Zoom and we pray. We hear testimonies, we lay worship before God and we lay those requests before God. If you can join us, please do. If you can't, please spend time this week praying for the church, praying for each other, praying for the expand, equip and evolve vision. If you've got any prayer requests, please let us know. It would be our privilege to pray for you. So that's Tuesday, 6.30 via Zoom. Prayer meeting. 
On Saturday, Saturday the 10th of February, we have a church social coming up. I'm really looking forward to that as we just gather together, just enjoy each other's company. We've got an opportunity for you to invite family and to invite friends because on Saturday, the 10th of February, we are going to have a quiz night. This will be from 6 till 9 o'clock and it is for the whole family, it's for us all to get involved with. Um, build your quiz team, come along, play, enjoy, have quiz and also there will be cakes and refreshments, just some cakes and drinks available through the night as well. Colin is organising this, he is our quiz master and if you want to know any more information please go and speak to him, it's going to be a great night and I really encourage you to put this in your diary, save a date, build a quiz team and let's have some fun together. So that's Saturday the 10th of February 6 till 9 quiz night. And then Sunday, Sunday the 11th of February we are going to have live worship back with us always a great time really looking forward to that so that's sunday the 11th of february 11 a.m live worship can i also once again encourage you as i said last week maybe you are a guitarist maybe you want to learn to play guitar maybe you are a singer and or you are somebody who can play an instrument or wanting to learn an instrument if any of that interests you or you are able to do it can you come and speak to either myself or Brian, we would love to speak to you. Also, we are needing just a bit more um, finance money, finances for us to get some instruments and just to get some other things. And we've been so blessed by many people and we thank you for everything that has been given. But if you are able to give a little bit more to worship, a little bit extra to worship, we would really appreciate it. And there's just a tub at the back with worship on it. Please put your money in there. Worship, 11th of February, Sunday 11th of February, live worship once again in the building. Really looking forward to it. And as I always say, don't forget our website. It has all the information, it has all the links, it has everything you need to know about the life of the church. Otherwise, let's keep expanding, equipping and evolving. God bless you. Okay, so Sunday schools, if you'd go to your groups. We'll just let... <laughs> newest. <laughs> okay, let's pray. Lord, we just... Thank you for these Sunday school groups. We pray your blessing and your anointing upon them now, Lord. We pray, Lord, that they'll have a great time. They will learn lots about you. They'll build on foundations of you, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord Father God, for ourselves, as we hear your word this morning, that we will hear you, we will seek you, we will find you. And you would work into our hearts this morning, Lord, we pray. In your precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you've got your Bibles, you might want to turn to um, Jeremiah chapter 29. We're going to come to that in a little moment. So, last week... We talked about being redeemed, and I encouraged us to have that as a New Year's resolution. That we would um, take each day and we would remind ourselves that we are redeemed and what redeemed means for us. And I know some of you have been doing that this week and believe it's been a blessing to you, which is great. But it also got me thinking about what to speak on today. 
And I thought to myself, well, what other healthy resolutions can we have? If we can commit to saying I am redeemed each day, what else could we commit to? Because as far as I'm concerned, we're still in the 57th day of January or whatever it is. It's still going strong, isn't it, January? And so what other good New Year's resolutions can we have? And then on Tuesday, many of you probably read it on the Version Bible app. There was a verse for the day, which was Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, which says this. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I read that earlier in the day on Tuesday. Ooh, I read that earlier on the day in ch on Tuesday and I thought, oh, that's great. That's what I've been looking for. That's a wonderful New Year's resolution for us to seek God every day. But then at the prayer meeting, Hawaii brought it up and people started to talk about it. And I'm going to be honest, I kept quiet. Because I thought to myself, oh, I've already felt led to speak on that. And I'm a bit worried this is going to get solved before I get to Sunday. <laughs> so I'm not going to say much. <laughs> and then my brain started to go everywhere else. And I learned my first lesson about seeking. Something that Daisy did to me 12 years ago. Daisy's almost 18 now. She was six years old. And Daisy had money to spend. So, uh, yeah, we all know where this is going. So I took her to Toys R Us. That's where she wanted to go. Toys R Us still existed then. Went, took her to Toys R Us. It's a huge one. She goes in. She's six years old. She goes in. The first thing she picked up after about 90 seconds of being there was this doll. And I went, oh, that's nice. That's in your price range. That's good. Vicky's working. I'm thinking we can get home here quickly. And she went, hmm, maybe. I want to have a good look around. Three hours later. Three. I'm surprised we didn't get chucked out, if I'm honest with you. Three hours later. Time had stood still for me. I had looked at every doll, every Barbie doll, every kitchen accessory, you name it, fancy dress. Most of the stuff she looked at was out of her price range, but I've looked at each and every one of it. And then she goes, do you know what I've decided? I was like, hallelujah, I'm rejoicing. She goes back to that doll she had picked up 90 seconds into those three hours. <sighs> I didn't know if to be happy or really cross at her. But I learned something very valuable about that. And this is what I did with this preach. Because I was a bit worried about preaching it. Because we'd spoken about it in the prayer meeting. So I went everywhere else. And God kept bringing me back to this. You know, often when we seek God, he will speak to you straight away. <laughs> but sometimes we forget to listen. Sometimes we go, Is you sure that's what you mean? And we'll go everywhere else. And we end up back to where we started. And that's what's happened with this preach this morning. Because my encouragement to each and every one of us this morning, straight away, is that we will seek God more with all our heart. And that would be a wonderful resolution for us to have. Because let's imagine what that would look like for you. Imagine what that would look like for us as a church if we commit to seek him more than we ever have done before. Imagine what God can do with that. So before we read from Jeremiah, I want to give us a little bit of background and a little bit of context on what is actually happening. Why are those words even said? Jeremiah has sent a letter to the Jews in Babylon. 
And they were in exile, and they were going to be there for 70 years. They were going nowhere. But there was Hananiah, a false prophet, was giving them hope. And this false prophet was saying, don't worry, you'll be done in two years. You'll be able to go. It'll be okay. Listen to me. And let's be honest, two years and 70 years, you're going to kind of listen to the two years one, aren't you? It gives you a little bit more hope. It was a false prophet. It was wrong. But Jeremiah come along and he said, no, it's going to be 70 years. So here's my encouragement to you. Get comfortable. Settle down. Build your houses. Build your gardens. Work on the garden so you've got food to eat. Grow food, marry, have children, increase in population, live your life, is what Jeremiah is saying to them. And then he goes on to say, but live your life peacefully. Live peacefully with God and with each other. And be careful. Be careful not to listen or be distracted by the false prophets. And then Jeremiah picks it up from where we're going to pick it up. From Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 10 to 14. He goes on to say this. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. Amen. It's important for us to understand that, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11, it's a personal favorite, I'm sure, of many of us. For I know the plans I have for you. It's a Jeremiah 29, 13 is a new favorite for me. Seek God with all your heart and you will find me. Both come out of a moment of hardship. That's what's really interesting about both of them. It comes out of a moment of hardship. It comes out of a moment of bad news. They thought they were going to be there for two years. He's saying you're going to be there for 70 years. I'm no mathematician, but I know there's a big difference. I know there's a big difference. A difference that would have been disappointing. A difference that would have been hard for them to hear. But God says... I have a plan for you. I have a plan for you. Even in that disappointment, even in that hardship, even in those tough times, I have a plan for you. You are not alone. I have not left you. It will be okay. And through that hardship and disappointment, my encouragement is that I have plans for you and you can continue to seek me. To seek me with all of your heart, your whole being, and everything that you have. Even in the disappointment, even when times are hard, seek God because he has a plan for you. Amen? Before we move on to how, because that was the main question that why he asked on Tuesday. How? How do we do that? And I thought, great question which I know the answer. So I, <laughs> I looked that up. We're going to look at that. How do we seek God? But the important thing for us now is to know why. Because it's all great to hear that and to read that back then, but why is it still important for us today? Let me read four verses to you. Matthew six thirty-one to 33. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. 
Proverbs 8, 17. I love, love me, and those who seek me find me. Psalms 9 to 10. No, sorry, Psalms chapter 9, verse 10. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Psalms 34, 10. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. I could have used lots and lots more verses. But just in those few verses, we see that as we seek God, we see that we're given the peace of provision. We should, as we seek God, we see that he loves those who actively seek him out. We find him. And as we find him, we're reminded, aren't we, that we are redeemed, as we talked about last week. And as we're reminded we are redeemed, we're reminded we are forgiven, we are loved, we are cared for, we're helped, we It's good to see God in those good and tough times because of what we find. So how do we seek God? How do we actively seek God? Well, kind of the same way we seek anything. Now, I don't know about you, and I'm sure I'm not the only one here. But if you lost something, you know that moment where you lose something and you have to actively seek it? God was helping me with illustrations this just this week. In fact, mostly yesterday. I lost my phone yesterday. And I thought, okay, this is helpful. This is, helps with my illustration. I've lost my phone. And everybody starts to look for it, don't we? We go into something and we often lose keys, paperwork, phone, or whatever it may be. As for us as a household, it's a daily occurrence. And what happens is we lose it and we bounce into the one goes into one room, one goes into the other, the other goes into the other room, and we search and we seek for that item. Eventually, someone declares, I found it. I found it. The rejoicing, the relief that you feel when you seek something and you find it. You're all looking at me like I'm the only one who does this. I know I'm not. I know I am not. <laughs> There's nothing worse when you lose something that you are seeking. So as I was thinking about this, the first thing I realized, and I know this is going to sound really obvious, but the first thing you've got to do when it comes to seeking anything, but seeking God, is you've got to have your eyes open. I know it's obvious, but it's true. I have never seeked for something with my eyes shut. Yesterday when our phone, I lost my phone, now one of us shut her eyes going, okay, I'm looking, oh, baby, careful of stage here. Okay, I, I, I'm looking for it. You don't close your eyes, do you? As a youth pastor many, many years ago, we used to do a youth on a Friday night. And one of the things we, <laughs> we used to do, um, we, it was quite a big church building. And when the pastor was away, it was easier to ask for forgiveness and permission. We used to play, <laughs> don't have that as a thing in your life, but we used to play hide and seek in the dark. And it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. 20 young people would just scatter around this church in the dark and they would hide. And a couple of people would be on, and when you found one, that person would join you. And the, one of the reasons we did that game, not only was it popular and fun, but it took ages. So we didn't have to do much that night. It was a bit of a rest night for the leaders because the reality is it's difficult to find someone in the dark. <laughs> it's difficult to find something when our eyes are shut. The first thing you have to do when you see is to have our eyes open. Psalms 105.4, the message version says, Keep your eyes open for God. Watch for his works. Be alert for signs of his presence. You see, we have to focus our eyes upon him. We have to focus our eyes upon God. And that's difficult sometimes. In fact, a conversation we were having with Daisy 
yesterday. Once again, she, we were talking about Daisy, she's going to Bible college, as many of you know, and me and Vicky both have experience with that. And one of the things we said that she will love about it is she will be in this bubble and they do nothing else but focus their eyes upon God because that's what they're there for. The problem is you come into reality and you come into real life and it becomes a lot more difficult. Distractions, work, all those things that come along that you have to do. But it's great. And Vicky even made a comment that when she was there, it was the closest she ever felt for, for, to God because her eyes were completely upon him. There was nothing else around. We ha when we come to seek God, we have to have our eyes open. We have to be prepared to put those distractions aside sometimes and just watch and look upon God. Once again, when it comes to seeking something, I have never searched for something that I care about. Have you? No, we don't, do we? We look for it because we care about it or we care that somebody else cares about it, but we still care. Because that person cares. That's why we look. We care about it. I've never searched for anything that's not bothered me. But as soon as it's keys, paperwork or phone, I search like a rescue team. Looking for it. If you are asking the question this week, if you've asked the question this morning, if you're asking that question at all, how do I seek God? Or how do I seek God more? Can I encourage you this morning? You're already doing it. Because you care enough to know about it. And if you care enough to see God, you're already halfway there. Amen. So we have to see God with our eyes open. We have to care. But we also have to be desperate. What do I mean about, about that? Well, there are two ways to seek for something, isn't there? There's the way Daisy seeks for it, or any teenager, let's be honest, seeks for it. And there's a way the parent seeks for it. If I come into that room and I find it, there's going to be trouble. <laughs> We've all said it every way. Just yesterday, we were cleaning the house, and Daisy says to me, where's the dustpan and brush? I can't find the dustpan and brush. She's looking at me, giving me evils here. I can't find this dustpan and brush everywhere, anywhere. And I went, how much have you looked? Oh, high and low, really? I opened the cupboard. I moved one coat. I went, there it is. <laughs> I went, you're going in my sermon. You're going, that's punishment. You're going in my sermon for this. <laughs> she says, fair enough. <laughs> you know, sometimes the look is so half-hearted. They go, can't find it. But there's also the second way of looking, the parent's way of looking, where we go into a room and we turn Sherlock Holmes, don't we? And what's out of place? Where could he have rolled to? How would he have gone? And you look and you give everything to it. But the problem is that sometimes that still doesn't work. And the desperation kicks in. If you ever reach that point when you're so desperate to find it, you start to panic. And we start to frantically look more. And we become desperate. You see, when we seek God, he doesn't want us to be half-hearted. He doesn't want us just to come to church and go, okay, well, I've come to church, I do. He doesn't want us just to open the Bible and go, well, you know, let's see. He wants us to be desperate for him. He wants us to give everything for him. He wants us to come to church and go, I'm going to give you everything. I'm going to give you everything. David writes in Psalm 63, 1, You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water. David's going through a tough time here. But he's parched. He's for him. He earnestly seeks him with everything. And there's this desperation. It's not half-hearted. It's our all. This also leads me on to my next point. Persistence. 
that moment when you can't find it, which happens to us as a family a lot. But we don't give up. We keep looking because you know it has to be in our room or it has to be in the house. Yesterday when I lost my phone, I knew it was in the house. I had had it moments before. That's always the worst, isn't it? When you've got it, you know you had it. And you continue to look. You don't give up. And that's the same when we seek God. It's not something you should do just occasionally. It's with consistency and consistency. It's with a desire that each day you will seek God. After all, when you look for something, how often, when you don't give up, you actually find it. That's the reality. If you give up, you don't find it. If you keep going, you find it. It's about being persistent. In coming to church, it's about being persistent in praying each day. It's about being persistent in seeking Him through the scriptures. It's about desiring and being persistent in seeking Him each day. So to seek God, you seek Him with your eyes open. You seek Him because you care. You seek Him with a desperation. You seek Him with persistence. Whenever you're looking for something, you find it. Have you ever used this saying? It was in the last place I looked. It was in the last place I looked. Well, yes, of course it is. It wasn't in the fifth place, and then I carried on looking. You know, you just don't do it. Of course it's in the last place you looked. It's insane. But the truth is, it wasn't in the last place you looked. It was in the place where you left it. <laughs> That's the truth of it, isn't it? You've forgotten where you left it, but it's in the place you put it down. Yesterday, I found my phone on the bed. It's where I put it. I just forgot I put it there. That's the truth of it. And it wasn't the last place I looked. It was just the place where I left it. Today is all about encouraging us to seek God more. More than we have done before. And I want to encourage you. Because God is still in the same place that we may have left him in. He's still in the same place where we may have left him. For some of us here, let me encourage you as you go into this new year. That God is still in that same place. He's still in that same bookmark that you've got in your Bible that you were reading through and you've stopped. He's still in that bookmark of the devotions that you were reading but you've not been reading recently. He's still in that same place of that take and sit down to be with him. He's still in that same place. We've already made a New Year's resolution. That each day we're going to declare we are redeemed. Can I encourage us to make a second one? That we will continue or we will pick up again and see God each day. Now I'm aware after saying all of this, it can be quite overwhelming. It's quite warm in here, by the way. The heating's working, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it's warm in here. You've done well and there's a lot of information here. But there's just one more thing I want to say. It is possible.
ever think. So to seek God has to come from us. It has to come from us caring enough. It has to come from us to care enough to want to. It has to come from us by opening our eyes and pointing our focus upon him. It has to come and have a desperation to seek him and be willing to be persistent and consistent in our action into seeking him. It's about us being willing to pick it up from where we may have left it. And can I encourage you? It's worth doing. It's worth it because as we seek God and to be in his presence, there is no better place to be. I wonder if we could just close our eyes just for a moment. My encouragement to you this morning has quite simply been this. When we seek God with all our heart, we will find him. And for some of us, it could be the first time we're doing it. For some of us, it could be the thousandth time. But my encouragement to you this year is that you will seek God more than you ever have done before. And as we seek him, we'll have those eyes open. As we seek him, and we hear from him, and we'll be ready to pick that first item up and run with it. We'll seek him with persistency and consistency. We'll seek him because we care. We care what God has got to say. And we thank you, Lord, because you've not overcomplicated it. Because you are with us. We are never alone. You are closer than we think. You're in our back pocket, so to speak. You're there. We don't have to search the whole house for you. Because you are there with us. So we come before you this morning with all our hearts and we seek you once again. And as we do that, we thank you, Lord, that we will find you. Help us to be open to you, Lord. In your precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We take our last song, which is King of Kings, Majesty. As we do that, um, peace is going to go round with the offerings this morning. Thank you. Let's stand. Let's stand and sing. King of kings, majesty, God of heaven, living in me, gentle saviour, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end. All within me falls at your throne. Your majesty